Thanks for listening to the HCH podcast. We are building a community of short-term rental hosts and property managers, plus a valued audience of industry professionals. To help us on our journey, please hit the subscribe button wherever you listen. It will help us to grow this platform and increase the amount of quality free education we can share with you, our valued audience. Also, in April 2024, we will be hosting our first event in collaboration with the Property Investor Show. Holiday Cottage Handbook Live will be held at Excel London on the 19th and 20th of April. There will be panel sessions and seminars, plus a bunch of exhibitors from across the short-term rentals industry. Tickets are free. All you need to do is register online. Head to propertyinvestor.co.uk for further details. Hello and welcome to the Holiday Cottage Handbook Podcast, the platform which helps you become the best and most profitable short-term rentals manager. I'm your host, James Varley, and today we'll be talking to another special guest in the property industry. Steve Taggart is the founder and managing director of My Getaways, an award-winning holiday rentals management company based in the south coast town of Brighton in the UK. Steve will be talking about his journey in the industry and discussing the recent spring budget when Chancellor Jeremy Hunt announced the abolishment of the furnished holiday lettings tax regime. Now, our goal here at HCH is to share everything you need to know about buying and managing short-term rentals. Whether you're a host, investor, or property manager to get the most out of our platform, make sure you head to the website. It's holidaycottagehandbook.com, where you can sign up for our newsletter and download our free ebook, which offers a comprehensive guide to buying and managing short-term rentals. Also, make sure you follow us on social media. We're active on Facebook, X, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, and YouTube. You can get all the links from our website, holidaycottagehandbook.com. Before we speak to our special guest, I want to tell you all about HCH Financial Services. This is a new brand that specializes in providing access to the best holiday let mortgages on the market. Their team of award-winning brokers provide an unrivaled service. Whether you're looking for your first holiday let loan, a remortgage or a financial product like life insurance or will writing. The team can also help you secure a range of other products, including residential, buy to let and HMO mortgages, along with bridging finance and equity release. To get in touch with the team, call 0333 1234 536 or email advice at hchfs.co.uk. You can also visit the website for further details, hchfs.co.uk. Thank you for listening to the HCH podcast. It's time now to welcome our special guest. Steve Taggart is the founder and managing director of My Getaways, an award-winning holiday rentals management company based in the south coast town of Brighton in the UK. Steve, it's a pleasure to welcome you to the podcast. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me on, James. Thanks for having me on. Look forward to our discussion today. Yeah, it is our pleasure to host you. Now, we are going to get on to the big news here in the UK a little bit later, which, of course, is the aftermath of the spring budget and the abolishment of the furnished holiday lettings tax regime. We're obviously waiting to hear more information from the government. But before we get there, let's talk about your journey a bit and what you're doing with My Getaway. So tell us how you got involved in the short term rentals world. Well, I guess like most um, most uh, professional hosts, you kind of fall into it um, and kind of bring some of your previous world background with you into it and say, oh, can we do this a little bit better than than the competitors are? That's kind of how you generally fall into it. Um, my, my journey started with a, a flat in central Brighton that um, was trashed by tenants and uh, I was going to sell it. It was offered a, quite a lot of money below the asking price and um, – I, you know, I kind of didn't know where to go with it. A friend of mine said, have you tried all of that? He was using uh, Owners Direct at the time, so long before Airbnb came on the scene for the UK. And um, and I had a look into it, did a bit of research, as you do, the uh, earlier days of the internet, uh, and thought this is worth worth a go. So uh, on a spin of a credit card, I, I turned that property around, gave it a bit of a refurb, and income pretty much overnight trebled. So... Um, that was the kind of the, the torch that kind of lit me, you know, to the short-term rental sector. Um, I went from there to um, carried on doing what I was doing at the time with my work, but always had that in the back of my mind that I'm using managing agents for this. And, you know, I, I kind of um, have a one eye on the technological 
background in, even in a completely different sector in the past. Um, the geek in me was saying there's some tools here that can be built that can make the process, the communication, particularly with me as an owner, a lot more straightforward. Um, and eventually, 2015, something else happened in my life as it does, and I said, right, I'm going to do it, and we're going to go and have a go at it. So I came from a, a software-first approach as a, a property manager. I actually had the sum total of one property on my books, which is my own. Um, but through the experience I've had with other management companies over that time, who were still working on spreadsheets and physical diaries, I thought there's got to be a better way to do it than this. So uh, I started out in 2015, set up my getaways. At the time, it was Brighton Getaways. We've obviously changed the name in time to mean that we can, we're not geographically locked, but, uh, and we built our software before we started onboarding properties. Um, that was version one, you know, it was a minimum viable product, but it, it really got me thinking deeply on, on how the owner and the guest experience, I don't think, were being um, looked after properly. And as you'll hear later on the podcast, you know, I'm very much about communication and managing that communication process. So, so that's where it started. And, you know, we're, we're here nine, nine and a bit years later since um, the incorporation um, and, you know, we, we just in our local region won the meeting business of the year for, for the Sussex Business Awards a couple of months ago. So um, quite clearly the journey's been, you know, uh, a fun journey, but we, we're, we're kind of in a really good place now. We now look after about 100 properties, but that doesn't tell the full picture because a lot of our properties are very large. Some of them sleep up to 25 people. So last year we had 25,000 guests stay with us. So... Uh, that's my getaways in a nutshell. The technology is still, um, you know, I thought it would take me six months to build. It's still happening today. We're still building new tools every single day of our uh, of our journey. So, uh, and it's never ending. There is never going to be an end point of, of our software, but um, our whole environment is in-house. So we don't need to use much third-party software tools to, to operate our business. So that's yeah, where we are. Technology projects never ever stop, do they? Never it's, stop. Uh, never, uh, every ever. single one that I've worked on, it's uh, you're always on the next version, the next version. How you can how you can improve it. So uh, congratulations on the award as well. That's fantastic. So tell us about my getaways. Then give us the elevator pitch. Who are your bread and butter customers? Um, we're an urban. We, we we operate in an urban uh, environment, so we're in a city, small city maybe, right by the coast. So we have a mix of of leisure and um, business travellers. Uh, and uh, obviously being in an urban environment, you know, our guests live cheek by jowl with um, with people that live there full time in these properties. So if you have a block of four apartments, we might have two of them that are short-term rentals and we have two that are not. Um, so my avatar and my, my, one of my big points of difference is we, you know, we, we ensure we, we're good neighbours. We look after our neighbours. That's a real important part of it for us. And I'll tell you how a little bit later on. Yeah, looking after your neighbours is so important, isn't it, to be really? to be part of it because, you know, you're all part of the same community. And the last thing you want is your neighbours complaining about them. They need to be your allies rather than your your opponents, of course. Um, so, um, so tell us then, I mean, over that time, what have you learned from a – a property hosting and management point of view. If there are people out there who maybe they're at the start of their journey, what would your top tips be to people? Well, look, um, certainly my absolute top tip would be, you know, um, you're ho- having high occupancy is vanity. Make sure you get your rates right and make sure there's a good mix of of occupancy and revenue. So, you know, um, having 100% occupancy on, on, on a pound a night is not going to keep anybody happy, except for the guests maybe. Uh, and they'll still find something to moan about. You know, they'll, they'll see it as a some sort of scam. So always look after your occupancy. That's a really important part of it. But most importantly, make sure your revenue is right. It has to be a mix between the two. Anybody says to me they've got 100% occupancy, I'd be really nervous their rates were too cheap. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's a really interesting point. And in terms of property management there, you were saying you literally started your business with, with the single property and you've grown it now to, to over 100. Um, what are your top tips to people out there who maybe want to get into that? They want to be they want to have a property management business and they want to scale it. What would your uh, your best advice be to those people? Um, is get out there and start talking to people. You know, get out of your office, get away from your desk and away from your computer and, and network. 
Um, that's absolutely important. You need to be the face of your business, especially when you're starting out early days. People need to know that the person they're talking to is the person who's going to be responsible with their property and look after it um, accordingly, like it was their own. Um, so uh, that is absolutely key to it. Um, owners have to believe in you. It's, this is a people business. We're in the hospitality sector. Uh, hospitality is all about people. doesn't matter how much technology you throw behind it, and we've done a lot. Um, you know, you have to get out and talk to people. So get away from your desk. Don't think you can, don't think you can operate a, a business just from behind your computer screen. You can't. Um, you have to get out and talk to people. During Holiday Cottage Handbook Live on the 19th and 20th of April, Super Control will be hosting personalised discovery sessions. Whether you're aiming to boost your bookings, streamline operations or enhance the guest experience, Super Control's experts can show you how the platform can transform your business. Discover the secrets to maximising visibility on platforms like Airbnb and Booking.com. Unlock powerful secrets to drive success, all while simplifying the process property management experience. Spaces for these 15-minute sessions are limited and they're filling up fast. Book your discovery session now by visiting supercontrol.co.uk forward slash property dash investor dash show and take the first step to making your holiday letting journey smoother and more profitable. What are your top tips for delivering that exceptional guest experience? And also in terms of communication, which you mentioned before, you said communication is, is so, so important. What are the best ways to be communicating with your guests? Yeah, well, obviously we, we use every medium known to man to communicate with guests and we allow guests to communicate with us in a way that suits them, not a way that suits us. Um, but, you know, for, for make sure you've got a phone for sure. Make sure they can ring you they, if they want to talk to you, especially older guests. That's how they communicate. Uh, make sure you've got WhatsApp facilities. Make sure you've got text messages and email and communicate with your guests as much as you possibly can pre-stay. Um, during the stay, leave them alone and let them enjoy themselves, but know that you're there for them to look after them. And post-stay, find out and get feedback from them. You will get that from reviews, but one in one in, only one in four people will leave a reviews if you're lucky. So you really want that valuable feedback on how their stay was. Um, think about your properties as a home away from home. That's how our sectors um, won uh, the business that we have. We've taken a huge chunk of the market from traditional uh, mum and dad Airbnb, uh, uh, B&B hotel type arrangements because they're sleeping in a room on their own away from their friends and family. We're trying to bring people together. So make sure you have you know, decent Wi-Fi, number one, you know, make sure, uh, and, and almost it's almost more important than hot water these days, having decent Wi-Fi. And I'll tell you absolutely why. It's not for the parents, it's for the kids. If someone's travelling with children and that Wi-Fi doesn't work, the parents are not going to have a relaxing day. So make sure your Wi-Fi is absolutely top-notch. And also have backup Wi-Fi towers sitting in your office in case that Wi-Fi goes down, which does happen occasionally, you can chuck them into the property so at least you've got a stop gap. And the guests will appreciate that you've bent over backwards to, to accommodate that. So, you know, that would that would be that would be an absolute important communication, number one. And, and number two, making sure that you you have things in place that people would want away from home from away from home, which is of course Wi-Fi. Yeah, Wi-Fi is so important. Yeah, my uh, my daughter would hit the roof if she couldn't play the the Peppa Pig game uh, on on my phone. Um, in terms of and, being, and just to add to that, she wouldn't be very understanding about it either. Can you imagine <laughs> your stay if you didn't have that? <laughs> Absolutely. It is so important, isn't it? You know, one thing we put in uh, in our ebook, which you can download from the website, you know, there are two things that you've got to get right. You've got to get your photography fantastic. It needs to be taken by a professional. It needs to look amazing. Uh, and you've got to have great Wi Fi. And I think another thing with Wi Fi as well, if if you've got super fast Wi-Fi at your property, shout about it in your listing. If you've got 100 meg or download speed or whatever it is, put it in your listing. Tell people, you Absolutely. know, verify yeah. it, this kind of thing. Get a screenshot on there. You know, get a screenshot of your speed. If you haven't got super fast Wi-Fi, let them know you haven't got it as well in case they are going to book expecting 100 meg and you've got three, you know. Um, so make sure you, um, you know, shout about it. You're right about the photography. I mean, it's such a key area. We, we use, you know, where, where, where applicable, we use drone shots and all sorts of stuff. Anything you can do to sell that property and make it look as presentable as possible. But but don't over-egg it. You know, that would be also an important factor. 
don't take a property photograph of another property and put it on your listing and expect to get good reviews at the end of it if it doesn't look exactly like that photo. Because that photo, it has to say what the property looks like on day one and day 1,000. Yeah, yeah, very true. Yeah, the honesty and the trust aspect as well. Yeah, it's got to look like uh, look like the photos, but make the photos as, as great as you possibly can. Um, you mentioned as well before, and I think this is such an important point about being a good neighbour. So when it comes to managing your properties, how do you make sure that you're a great neighbour? Look, I mean, you, you're going to ask me later, you were going to ask me later on about my favourite bit of tech, and it's probably an unusual one, but, you know, my favourite bit of tech, and it was a lifesaver for a for our business was was when Minute Point came into the came on the scene. Excuse me, <clears throat> when Minute Point came on the scene, you know the the Minute Point device was a game changer for us. It meant that we could ensure that we knew about noise problems before our our neighbours did. And the only the part that we added to that mix was ensuring that we reacted on it, having a security company to be able to go out at three o'clock in the morning if someone's decided to have a party in one of our properties. It's exactly that kind of reactive um, procedures you need to put in place to ensure that, you know, the neighbours are not upset. Make sure that neighbours have got your phone number. You know, that's uh, another key part of it. Make sure they know who you are uh, or or your representative of the business. If you're a business of our size, um, whoever's working on duty at weekends, they'll have a direct phone number for them. We'll have a landline number. We'll have virtual assistants to answer a call overnight. But they'll also have a manager's phone number to call them or to contact them by text if there's a problem. You know, it's very, very important you keep neighbours happy. You need to be part of the community, not a disruptor within your community. Because if you are, you won't have a business for very long. Yeah, yeah, very, very true. And yeah, Minute, uh, some amazing technology. We're very proud to have them uh, as sponsors here at Holiday Cottage Handbook. Make sure you check them out, guys. Um, In terms of uh, dealing with property owners then, because this is the other side of the business. We've talked really about how you're dealing with the guests and ensuring that amazing guest experience. How do you ensure an amazing experience for for the homeowners? Well, uh... I think, again, it's about ensuring that you audit the properties regularly, that your completeness feedback, if there's any problems in there. If you've got a maintenance team, which we have, make sure your maintenance team are, are on site very quickly to resolve any any issues that happen. That gets the trust of the owners. And, of course, make sure that if you're making scheduled payments to owners that you pay them, you know, when you say you're going to pay them. Um, you know, that will build trust. And, obviously, owners are in it. For two things, a lot of the time they're in it because they've been accidental landlords and they've fallen into it. This may well have been their home in the past. So ensure that, you know, you are treating it as they want it to be treated. Treat it like your own property. Um, you know, and if you're doing that systematically like we are with audits, we'll do regular audits in our properties to ensure they're happening and it should be okay. Cleaners have check sheets to, to check certain areas of the property to make sure that everything's exactly as it should be, not just in the photographs, but more importantly, that we're looking after properties for our owners so that they have faith in us to, to manage them and enjoy the extra revenue and flexibility they have for short-term rentals. Absolutely, yeah. Now, because of the number of properties that you're managing, you'll be getting access to a lot of data, especially with the, with the software that you've got implemented. We're speaking in towards the end of March in 2024. What trends are you seeing so far this year? And what do you think property managers and hosts need to be aware of as we as we get into 2024? Uh, well, a few things. Um, you know, booking windows have reduced this year. Um, you know, we, we've seen that. Um, I would say to property managers, just hold your nerve on your rates uh, a little bit longer than you would normally do. You don't have to drop your drop your rates quite so quickly um, because people are booking later. Probably a lot to do with the, the rain we've had in the last three months in the UK. January, February, and March has just been a pretty much a washout. So um, as a result, people are not thinking about Easter, summer, just quite yet. So um, hold your nerve, hold your rates. That's a, a really uh, important factor. Um, the the other trends we're you know we, we've seen over certainly over the last year is there's a lot more availability, a lot more properties coming into the sector. It doesn't mean they're particularly good properties. What you're finding is after last January, February, particularly when the rates started really ramping up, the interest rates, owners were sitting on their buy to let properties that were making them good returns for you know, for, for every month or every year, and they they were quite happy sitting on that. And all of a sudden, their 1% interest rate, 1.5% interest rate, went up to 6% when they came to the end of the deals. And they've then got to look at other ways to um, recoup that. And quite a lot of them entered the sector 
um, at that time to to try holiday lets, particularly over last summer. And we saw a lot of that. That increase has slowed quite dramatically over the last four or five months, particularly, probably because a lot of people saw how difficult it was to actually operate a short-term rental last summer, first of all. And secondly, uh, I think people have got used to the interest rates being being as they are. And the third point, of course, regulation is just just around the corner. We know licensing's coming. We know some planning changes are coming. And we also know that the tax changes are definitely coming. What they're going to look like, we don't know exactly there. But that is enough to make anybody nervous that has been used to for many years having a normal vanilla buy to let. And I understand that. Um, but I think our key... Um, you know, my key view on that is don't panic. You know, work with a, prop- a professional property management company if you're unsure of how these things are, are going to play out because we will have a better insight than you will if you're trying to work on your own. Yeah, you've mentioned the pending tax changes there, and that leads us on very nicely to the spring budget. You were actually in Parliament when Jeremy Hunt delivered that budget. Um, so tell us what was going through your mind, first of all, when you when you heard him say furnished holiday lettings tax regime would be abolished. Well, I sat for an hour and four minutes up till that point, enjoying the budget, enjoying the atmosphere, enjoying the day, wondering why I'd been invited and uh, <coughs> and took it fairly, you know, fairly calmly. It was kind of, okay, that's, that's really kind of not a lot going on here. So the ambience was good. And then all of a sudden out of the blue, and we're going to abolish furnished holiday, furnished holiday tax uh, regime. And it, it really was one paragraph in, uh, in an hour and 10, hour and 15 minute budget speech. So my first thought, port of thought, you know, port of call was, what's that? Going, how's that going to affect us? You know, you, you're trying to take it in. It was only when, when I left um, the chamber that I kind of started dawning on me. Okay, these are the changes that are going to happen. How's that going to affect our owners? And more importantly, how's it going to affect their confidence, knowing that we've also got the double whammy of planning and licensing coming this summer, which our owners are just getting used to, and their head around that this new this new legislation is coming. So um, it was over, that was on the Wednesday, it was over the weekend, I spoke to several um, smarter people than me, uh, certainly when it comes to tax and uh, you know, accounting and, and, asked, and capital allowances and asked them what their view was on, on these changes. And of course, they only heard the same as I'd heard, which is one paragraph narrative on, we're going to change your world, you know. Um, but once I got to underneath the you know, once I got underneath the initial kind of surprise of this is what's going to happen and reading all the forums of doom and gloom, I got down to the facts. And actually, the fact is quite likely, as we know, that mortgage interest relief um, is going to change. You know, you're not going to be able to claim mortgage interest relief on short-term rentals the way you were. You're going to be able to do exactly the same as you were, uh, you would be on a buy-to-let. How, what that actually means, it means, in my mind, the 20% tax players are going to be completely unaffected. So if you have a retired couple with one holiday let and that's their source of income, it's very unlikely they're going to see any changes as far as they're – and they've got a mortgage on their property, they're going to see any changes at all. If you've got your property in a, a limited company, you're also not going to see any changes at all. So the people that hit, so those 40% taxpayers that have – Two or three properties that aren't, um, you know, that the, the they haven't had the opportunity to to kind of look at putting that in some kind of vehicle that would make, mean they're tax efficient. Um, so, so it's the forty percent taxpayers are going to pay um, pay extra tax. However, um, my thought on that will be those that have jumped into the sector over the last eighteen months, two years, uh, and brought loads of new properties into into the sector has had a really downward trend on average daily rates, as we all know. Um, and that's happened right across the country. We've, you know, we've seen average daily rates drop and we've seen booking lead times drop. I think we're going to see a reversal of that. So I would expect that the average daily rate will increase. People will jump out of the market that were looking for an easy ride. Um, those that are working with professional property managers will get the right advice because we're connected to the the right kind of professionals that can give us the the, you know the correct advice, uh, and they'll 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 look at their reevaluate their position and, and obviously move forward with higher rates and uh, and higher income, and that should outweigh by quite some way uh, any uh, additional tax they'd have to pay. Those that are in those that are already in uh, limited companies and are twenty percent taxpayers are going to benefit from that too. So 
it should be a you know a pretty um, a pretty interesting few months. Yeah, I mean, it's very important to state, like you mentioned there, it literally was one paragraph in the budget. We don't have any meat on the bones yet. We don't know what that legislation is going to look like. So now is the time, hopefully, that the industry can unite a bit and put forward the case for why we need help and support in order to support the tourism industry and, and showcase what we do. So, and, and I think that's been one of the positives that's come out of this. We have seen the industry kind of like come together and start sending letters to MPs, which, which really you could argue should have been going on anyway, really, to kind of promote what we're doing. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I, look, you know, I, I think all of the associations, STAA, um, PASC, and many others, have been really good at um, working on the um, working on the licensing and planning changes that are coming. After seeing the the mess created in Scotland, um, I think the the UK government for England um, probably learned some lessons from what happened there. Uh, and it feels like a fairly soft touch approach to licensing and planning. However, um, the associations um, and, of course, individual operators that have been involved in adv- advocacy, like myself, um, have been looking at, you know, how we can manage that going forward. This um, this new one was a bit of a bombshell. I mean, it was a bombshell for all of us. However, you know, as I've said already, you know, that, that we're going to see changes to you know, probably changes to um, mortgage um, interest relief. We're probably going to see changes to capital allowances, although I'm sure the um, association will be arguing that one because short-term rentals are a business. They should benefit from capital allowances, um, just the same as a warehouse should or an office building should. We are operating a business. This is a business. It is not a residential property. Uh, and therefore, we should have the same benefits as any business. Um, but that that one's still up in the air, I think, the capital allowance. I don't think there's any clarity on that from any sector. Um, our capital allowances guys say are saying, you know, whatever happens with capital allowances, they don't see any changes in that until April next year. So if you're already if you're already doing it, get your capital allowances claiming as soon as you possibly can. Um, there is no mention of any clawback like they did in the pensions um, sector many years ago. Um, so once you've got your capital allowances in place, you should be able to benefit from that um, that tax advantage. So I'm, I'm sorry to draw back to tax again, James, but there are two key areas that um, are you know really up in the air with these tax changes, and that is mortgage interest relief and capital allowances. I think. I really hope you're enjoying this episode of the HCH podcast. To help us grow, I have a small favor to ask. Hitting subscribe and rating our show wherever you listen will help us to grow our platform and share even more high quality free education about the short term rentals industry. Also, if you have a friend who you think would find our content useful, please send them a link or direct them to the website. It's holidaycottagehandbook.com. All right, back to the show. For the hosts and property managers out there who want to lobby or want to make a difference but but don't really know where to start maybe they've just got one property and they kind of keep themselves to themselves and and get on with it uh what's what's your advice to those people who want to kind of get involved and and promote what we're doing and and kind of help the cause well the first port of call i would say get in touch with your local um professional property management company just like us if you're in sussex please feel free to get in touch i'm you know i'm available to to have a chat and pass on any information, read the blog I've done on it, and I'll be doing newer blogs on that as well. Um, but you know, most of the professional property management companies will have a handle on what's going on here. If you're an individual, you won't, you, you're not accessing the information we are. That'll be the first port of call. The second port of call would be join an association. You know, absolutely join PASCs, join STAA, you know, join one of these guys, and they will be able to give you advice and point you in the right direction. And as far as, um, you know, some joined up thinking on, you know, pursuing your MPs, PASC, I know have got um, a fabulous um, campaign underway at the moment. I think it's already over 10,000 letters to local MPs to to argue this um, these new tax changes. So that these are, these are, you know, good guys. These are guys that are working hard on, on our behalf. We're a member of the SDAA, but... You know, I'm, I'm a load of respect for for what Alastair um, Pask is doing, uh, and um, you know, and I fully support that as a 
as a professional property management company. And uh, so that would be my two ports of call, really. Speak to your local um, professional property management company. You might end up doing some work with them going forward. But even if you don't, I'm sure they'll be happy to answer questions uh, and give you a bit of advice like we will do for for only not our owners, but also other other people in our area. And secondly, join definitely join an association. It costs you next to no money, and it's a wealth of advice and support. One thing I've found since getting involved in the short-term rentals industry on a, on a full-time basis is that pretty much everybody you speak to is in favour of some sort of registration scheme, some sort of licensing scheme. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, and why potentially is it so important? It had to happen. Uh, it's it's um, it's our sector growing up. Ten years ago, we were disruptive. You know, we were disruptive, and everybody was doing the same thing but their own way. Um, you know, we we have to. Um, we have to, you know, uh, licensing shows guess a level of confidence in our sector that we're doing things the right way and their safety and comfort is paramount. It also, it's also important for owners that, you know, that licensing um, comes along so that they can adhere to the rules and regulations that we're all playing on the same level playing field. I mean, it's a, it's a really important area. Um, licensing is, you know, it had to happen. It happens in every sector. And it's at, now it's coming to ours, and and we as um you know uh, uh, one of the bigger property managers in Sussex really welcome that. Reap the rewards of happier guests, easier upsells, repeat bookings, and glowing reviews by using a digital guidebook from Touchday. This fantastic solution is enabling hosts to deliver a more personable guest experience and halving the amount of time they spend on guest management. Touchday elevates the way you communicate with guests, reduces the number of questions you receive, and significantly enhances the guest experience. Head to touchday.com for further details and to sign up for a 14-day free trial. And in terms of the data as well, and actually knowing the number of short-term rentals, um, exactly how they're operating, making sure that they're up to date with health and safety regulations and all this kind of thing, that's integral, right, in order to help the government create the right legislation for this industry. It is. It completely is. I mean, at the moment, the, the government don't have the data that they'll have a handle on it for those that have um, jumped onto business rates, but those that are in and occasionally are still on council tax, they have no idea where these properties are. Um, I don't think they have, I don't think the government have any handle at all on the size um, of our sector and where it is, what it's doing, who it's been operated by, why they're operating in that way. Uh, and they don't also have, at the moment, a handle on the varying degrees of health and safety. Um, in those property, particular, particularly around fire safety, um, you know, they just don't have a handle on it. So licensing had to come along for that that reason as well. So we can understand as a sector, we can understand as well, you know, the 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 um, the boundaries we're all working within, and all work off the level, same level playing field. And this is all moving towards professionalisation, right? And. What are the benefits of professionalization overall for this industry and, and the people who are keen to be part of it and keen to expand and, and play a working role in it? Well, again, I think it's down to that level playing field. You know, there, there'll be a certain set of rules and regulations you have to adhere to. Um, and you won't have owners pushing back and saying, I don't want to do that because it's going to cost me money. Well, you have to do it. It's part of, it's part of the licensing scheme. It's not us saying it. It's, um, it's the licensing scheme saying it. You know, it's... Uh, it's a good thing all around, and it'll take a lot of the cowboys out of our sector that give, and there isn't that many, but there are some um, that give our, our sector a really poor reputation in some instances. Um, you know, we are, we've seen people come into it. We've seen scammers come into our sector, you know, all of which have, have not helped um, us to, you know, as, as a sector professionalise, especially when you've got companies like mine that you know, and others, there's some other great companies out there that are, you know, pushing standards way beyond anything licensing can throw us. Yeah, I think it's, you, you made the, the point earlier, really, that all these interventions in terms of licensing and the new regulation, they will keep the serious players in the sector. And those who've come along potentially, you know, because they think they can get rich quick, um, will we'll probably manoeuvre out. And I, I saw an interesting thing, actually, in the Property Hub newsletter. It said a registration scheme will probably involve people having to say who their lender is. And it suggested that there are some people who are operating short-term rentals 
um, and their lenders who have given them buy-to-let mortgages or maybe even residential mortgages don't know about it. So again, it's going to be taking those people out. And like you said earlier, that's going to open it up for the serious players and potentially lead to a bit of a reduction in supply and potentially higher rates and, and better occupancy. You know, James, I mean, look, if, if, you, if you're not paying tax on your short-term rental and you're not paying VAT on your short-term rental and you're on a residential mortgage, you're benefiting from 2 or 3% cheaper um, interest rates, you know, of course your rates are going to be cheaper than ours. It's an absolute given. Uh, and I think there's the problem. You know, you have professional property management companies like like ours, and, and, and actually the vast majority of our sector are operated by people that have got the right intentions and are paying their taxes properly, paying their VAT properly, doing all the right stuff. But those that aren't, of course they're going to be able to reduce their rates because they're not paying any tax on it. They're not paying VAT. They're putting bogus photos on and turning listings off and on whenever they feel like it. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. We're competing against the un- that part of the unknown, and that part of the sector is is, is doing the sector no favours at all. Um, you know, from an independent operator that's doing all the right stuff to a property management company of my size and much bigger. You know, if we're all playing off the same level playing field, we'll see a levelling up of rates. Um, yes, the guests may be paying slightly more for their stay, but they know that when they're staying at that property, they're safe. You know, and, and um, you know, I've got two teenage children. I, I want to go into a property that I know my children are safe and it has a certain level of standards that's going to, in the event of a fire, for instance, it's going to make sure that my children and my family are okay. That's the important part. Um, and if you take out that, I don't know what percentage it'll be in the market because we don't have any data on it, but let's say it's 5% in the market or 10% in the market, you take them out of the market and all of a sudden the prices go up slightly, I'd pay that price quite happily as a family man to ensure, you know, my family are, are staying in a safe well-run, well-looked-after accommodation. Sustonica is the first sustainability badge for short-term rentals worldwide. Its standard allows owners and managers to make their homes consume less and to encourage guests to support the local community. The process is fully digital, and within seven days, you can appear in the search results of OTAs, including Booking.com, in the filter Sustainable Properties Level 3+. Find out more at Sustonica.com. So uh, just final question on the spring budget then, what will you be doing uh, between now and April 2025 to to make sure that this is as fair and equitable uh, legislation as possible? Well, I'll be, you won't be surprised to hear that I'm absolutely one of those 10,000 people that have wrote to our local MP. I've met our local MPs actually, um, not about the tax legislation is what we were talking about, you know, um, how short-term rentals might affect our city going forward. So I've got an open conversational relationship with them. Um, and what we'll be doing is, is doing exactly what everybody else should be, jump on that PASC. And SCA, I'm sure, will be doing exactly the same um, kind of survey to go to write letters to your local MPs and, and to argue that, you know, are these tax changes fair and make sure that when they are adopted, they're adopted in a thoughtful way that doesn't affect um, the supply of accommodation for tourists coming to to cities particularly like mine that is absolutely reliant on tourism. Absolutely. And just one more question that I'm going to ask, which has dropped into my head as well. You know, the government is uh, suggesting that these changes are are in relation to home ownership and, and all that kind of thing. Um, I mean, the... The issue with home ownership, it seems to me, is that we're not building enough properties. I mean, I, I, this is not, you know, the, the small number of properties that are furnished holding less, you know, taxing them and maybe taking some out of the market is not going to have a, a major material effect on, on the number of homes in the, in the country. It's not going to have a major effect. It, it was never going to have a major effect. If, 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 you know, if anything, you might see a rush to put more holiday homes on, especially I read a, a news article recently about London um, you know, in Westminster, complaining about exactly that. There, people rushing to get on to short-term, short-term rental accommodation sector um, before these changes take effect, before the licensing and registration schemes come in. So they're worried about losing more supply as a result of these um, these uh, legislative changes being rushed in. Um, I don't see it having a big, a big, um, you know, a big effect on the supply at all. If anything, it might be a negative. People getting out of the sector. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right then. So loads of chat there about the spring budget. That was uh, fantastic and hopefully informative for a lot of people. So, you know, make sure you're lobbying your your MPs and standing up for the sector and and sharing all the positive stuff we do, in, in, in especially in relation to employing people and tourism and supporting the, the local economies. Um, all right then, Steve, we've got a few questions to finish. Uh, give us your favorite brand in the STR space, apart from my getaways, of course. Um, uh, well, if we're talking about brand pers- particularly, it's got to be Minute, and it's Minute. Uh, I've got a really good relationship with the the founders of Minute. Um, I was an ex DJ, would you believe, for twenty years, and made mu- made music as well professionally before I started going deaf uh, uh, in my younger self. So I have a really cute understanding of how sound works. So um, you know, w- when they came on the scene, it was a game changer for me. It meant that we could manage our properties in a capacity that would allow us to be a good neighbor. And that was fundamental to our, to our business. It was a bit of hardware that we couldn't build. Uh, I did. And, and I, I tried, uh, I did speak to Niels about that uh, at length. You know, we did try to build something to, to resolve the problem that minute came along and fixed. Um, so that was a game changer for us. Yeah. Great shout out for a minute there. Uh, okay. Give us a individual in the STR space. You'd like to give a shout out to and why can I give you two? Yes, of course. So Richard Vaughan will be one of them. I know he was on your show not that long ago. Richard is a is a great friend. He's been a he's been a, almost a mentor kind of character to me over the last few years. Um, what that guy doesn't know about short term rentals in Europe isn't worth knowing. So uh, Richard Vaughan would be one of them. The other one would be Andy Fenner. Um, he's the chief exec of the STAA, uh, and Andy, you know, has been really helpful in in trying to open doors to local MPs and council leaders for us to be able to have the conversations about what short-term rentals sector will look like, not just now, but in the future. So, um, and that's what I say earlier on about make sure you guys enjoy join a uh, join association. And that's the handy line uh, and Alice, the handy side of PASCO, Andy Fenner, at, um, SCIA. These guys are super helpful in, in overcoming potential obstacles uh, in our sector. So Andy would definitely be uh, right up there. He's, um, he's been really, really helpful to us. Great shout out for Andy and also for Richard Vorton. Yes, we had Richard on the podcast recently. Make sure you check that one out. One of our most popular episodes. Uh, final question then, your number one piece of advice to hosts and managers who are worried about the pending abolishment of the FHL tax regime. I would say don't panic. Don't panic. You know, we haven't got the full um, full information, particularly on the tax changes yet. We have, you know, we haven't got the full information on um, uh, on changes to planning and changes to uh, an introduction of licensing yet. Um, we had a, um, we had, all we've had on that really is the press release they did back in January saying we're going to introduce it by the summer. Well, it's now nearly April, so um, I'll believe that when I see it, but you know, we may well see it, we may well not. Um, so I would say don't panic. These um, changes are going to be rolled out at some stage in the future, but as soon as we have more information on that, as a sector, the senior people in the sector will be sharing that information by blogs, by associations. I'm sure you'll be all over it, James, like a rash um, when we have more information on that. Um, there will be information out there. These things are never as bad as people first expect. Uh, in my experience, they never are. Um, And if you survive COVID, you're certainly going to get through these changes. Absolutely. Don't panic, people. It will all be all right in the end. Steve, thank you so much for your time. It's been a real pleasure. You're welcome, James. Thanks for having me. Great to speak to Steve Taggart there from My Getaways and discuss that very important news from the spring budget. Now is the time for our industry to unite, promote the value that we bring to people, businesses and the wider economy. It is not the time to panic, it's the time to professionalise. My thanks to Steve for joining us and giving his valuable opinion. That's just about it for this episode of the HCH podcast. Thank you very much for listening. If you like what you've heard, you can help our platform massively if you subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. For more free education, tips, and trends related to the short-term rentals industry, head to our website, 
where you can download our free ebook and sign up for our newsletter. It's holidaycottagehandbook.com. If you need any mortgage support, make sure you check out HCH Financial Services. Their team of brokers have access to the very best holiday let products and can also help with other property finance. Give them a call on 0 1234 536 or email advice at hchfs.co.uk. You can also visit the website for further details, hchfs.co.uk. Finally, if you'd like to get in touch with the show, you can email me directly, james at holidaycottagehandbook.com. That's it for now. I'll speak to you soon.